All right. Welcome, everyone, to lucky number 13 episode of An Intelligent Conversation. I'm Matt Lessinger, as always, with my co-host, Nolan Dalla. Uh, Nolan approached me before this episode and said he'd like to discuss libertarian socialism. <laughs> um, if you're like me, you probably have very little idea exactly what that means. So I'm hoping to learn more about it, maybe ask some questions. And uh, if anybody watching has any questions along the way, um, please go to Nolan's Facebook page uh, and post them there. Um, we have, as always, a, a great panel. I mean, one of the great things about doing these conversations is, is the incredible people uh, that we get to join us. And today is no exception. Uh, for the first time on our show, we have Greg Raymer. Uh, Greg is probably best known for being the 2004 World Series of Poker main event champion. Has been, uh, has been. <laughs> and winner better of, than a never been <laughs> i was gonna say I'm, I'm thinking like my off years nolan i've probably won more than your career total <laughs> your buy your buy-in is bigger than my whole career earnings sorry to interrupt sorry no to interrupt. problem <laughs> am i correct over over eight million dollars in in career tournament earnings yep. um but before he was a poker champion probably not everybody knows he graduated uh, with a master's degree in biochemistry, and then also graduated from Minnesota Law School, practiced law as a patent attorney for more than a decade, and spent the last six years of your legal career at Pfizer, which is obviously right. all over the news. Yay, um, Pfizer! Exactly. Yay, Big Pharma! <laughs> <laughs> um, Greg is a longtime libertarian, um, has some strong opinions. He's not afraid to share them. And we're really looking forward to learning from them today. So Greg, thank you for joining us. I'm glad to be on the show. Um, kind of like you though, when, when Nolan asked me about this and, and said libertarian socialism, that was like a brand new term to me as well. Um, but when I thought about it, it was kind of like, actually that probably describes my political views fairly well you know, as well as anything can be encapsulated in just one or two words. Right. So we'll, we'll dive into exactly what we mean when we say libertarian socialism. Um, and we have, uh, before we go any further, our returning uh, guest for the second time, Joe Stapleton. Uh, Joe is a longtime poker commentator and comedian. Um, I would say he brings a great down-to-earth point of view to our show. I feel like, Joe, you always make sense. I mean, that's the simplest way to put it. Um, we always appreciate your humor and your insight. So, Joe, thank is, you for joining is, is us this again. A, is this a character? Because I thought it was Zach Galifianakis. Uh, <laughs> there, we're, uh, things, things are growing in here pretty regularly. Thank you for having me. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, and I'm going to get right into it. Uh, Nolan, you came to me. You said, let's discuss libertarian socialism. What in your mind are we going to be discussing exactly? Well, we are starting a movement, gentlemen, because we have essentially on this panel four disparate people, four people with very different backgrounds, uh, different philosophies, different attitudes, different political thoughts, although we cross over uh, quite a bit. So what is, uh, what is socialism? Well, essentially, in my view, this is the way I'm trying to rebrand socialism, which is very misunderstood. I am a socialist, by the way. I am a socialist, and that's mis misunderstood by a lot of people. What do I mean by socialism? Socialism is essentially cooperation. Uh, capitalism is based on competition. The way wealth is created is through competition in a capitalist system. That's an oversimplification, yes. Send all your hate mail to Greg Raymer. Um, but socialism is based on the fact that we can accomplish a but lot do more. Via, do it via UPS and not, and not the USPS. <laughs> the UPS, that's exactly right. But you, you, we're going to get a lot more accomplished in society. I was thinking the opposite, because then I wouldn't have to deal with it. We're going to get <laughs> a lot more accomplished, gentlemen, by, by, um, uh, by cooperating rather than uh, 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 being in competition with each other. And where does libertarian come in? Well, libertarian is based on personal or individual freedom. I think that's a concept that we can also agree with. It's a, a thing that everybody wants. Most people certainly don't want to be told what to do by the government or by their boss or by their wife, although that, that in, in every case that happens, right? So 
what I'm trying to do here is merge the two. And there's a new movement that's emerging, which is called libertarian socialism, the foundation of which is as follows, very briefly. It's based on the fact that on the issues that we have common interests, we should cooperate, we should have a social network, for example, roads, bridges, protection, um, uh, health care, uh, a lot of things that we could work on together that I think operate better under a socialist uh, uh, model. At the same time, if those basic needs are provided by our cooperation, we will have the individual freedom to pursue the interests that we love, the things that we want to do. Who can be free in a society when you're in debt to banks, when you have student debt, when you can't pay your medical bills? That's slavery. That's not freedom. And essentially, uh, those who are libertarians, I'll turn this to Greg in a moment, have always professed an idea of self-reliance, no government interference in our lives. Well, I think that's an impossible um, a, a utopian dream that's completely impractical in today's world that requires cooperation, which is the essence of socialism. So that's my um, cliff notes on that. It's kind of like you, you can fuck whoever you want, but you can't fuck over anyone you want. Ah, oh, thank you. That's much better. Can I use that instead? Sure. Well, we have that. Greg, you've been a libertarian for a long time. How how do you feel about what Nolan just said? And how far do you take libertarianism? Like he brought up roads and bridges and things like that. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, there are obviously various degrees of libertarian philosophy, just like there are any political or social philosophy you want to discuss. Um, the real diehard libertarians would essentially say the government does absolutely nothing that isn't really 100% required um, at the most basic level. So like we would have some policing because we still want, you know, if, if, if Joe kills Nolan, we want there to be a police force that would try to stop well, that from happening no, just, and yeah, that would Nolan. punish, you know, that would arrest him and, and try him and, and punish him if found guilty and all that. So they would still have, you know, like a military for, you know, to prevent other countries from invading us. They would, say, yeah, we'll have a police force, but they want all that stuff to be as small as possible. And the real, you know, extreme libertarians would say like, no, roads don't have to be done by the government. Like the military, hard to imagine that being done by all of us, you know, individually. Right. But roads could be all privately owned and maintained, and then you just charge people to use your street. But imagine how that would work out in practice where you would have to like maybe stop and pay a toll every other block or Frank, something. The version I heard is that the government doesn't have to pay for the roads because Walmart's going to pay for the roads because how else are you going to get to Walmart if there aren't <laughs> roads? And that's um, one version of extreme libertarianism that I'll, I've heard. Uh, I don't know if anyone said that one seriously or not. If no, they were... genuinely that was posited to me as. Well, that's uh, someone who doesn't have a clue then. I mean, that's still Walmart owning the roads. And if, if they were doing it for free so that you could get to their retail stores, that would be just a different way of charging for it. They would build it into the cost of goods. Of course. Um, but, you know, we, it's hard to imagine, you know, a lot of these services being provided by privately owned corporations or individuals. I mean, you could have a fire department that is for profit. And it's like your house is on fire and they're kind of like, do you have insurance? You know, if not, then we're not going to put the fire out. Or, you know, if you don't have cash on hand, we're not going to put the fire out. You know, Which you is weird because if your body's on fire, the same thing happens. Do you have insurance? Because <laughs> yeah. if not, we're not going to yeah. put this cancer <laughs> fire out. Well, and, and that's, you know, again, one of the problems with, you know, private health care in general. I mean, if, if here's this corporate entity that's a hospital and you show up with no money, no insurance, no nothing, if we're being ultimate libertarians and total freedom, no government involvement, then why should they have to spend their resources, their time and money fixing you? So Greg, can I bring up another libertarian that was uh, sort of theory that was posited by the same person about healthcare is that when you take away all licensing and all uh, need to go to medical school, 
you have way more competition for doctors and the prices go way down and you have people like Uber who will just drive around and fix your broken leg because there's no barrier to entry to becoming sure. a doctor. Well, like I'm saying, that's the extreme view of libertarianism. And I have never been over there. Yeah. I've never been on that far end where I thought the government shouldn't be involved. For example, like you just mentioned regulation. I want there to be a government agency that goes to restaurants and inspects them for health code violations and make sure that they're not serving me botulism. Um, and that and sucks. I can't, Unless it's I mean, in a syringe in your forehead, in which case yeah. we're, we're all for it. Well, your forehead, maybe I'd rather be ugly. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so you could argue that like, oh, no, but like, especially now with social media, like you could just go look at reviews to make sure the restaurant, you know, hasn't been put down by people saying, oh, I got sick there. And, you know, and that's, you know, you could let competition try to work that out. But now you could have a restaurant doing a great job for a long time. Now you get one really bad employee and hundreds of people get sick. Maybe even some of them die before word gets out and everyone puts that restaurant out of business. So that's or like not... the current system, the places that can afford to have paid reviews can just flood their website. <laughs> and, I mean, well, that, that issue yeah. too, even if we <laughs> didn't have to worry about that. So I'm, I'm in favor of that kind of regulation. But since you well, brought up I, social media, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, you know, social media has been something that's been debated as possibly needing regulation. I mean, Joe was saying tongue in cheek that people, you know, are are paid to yeah. give reviews, but it's it's a true situation, For and sure. we don't know exactly what to believe. So, can um, in the current environment, can a place regulate itself in the way you described with? you know, basing itself on reviews and you you go to the highest rated place. I mean, if I go onto Amazon, for example. If I was know, buying uh, shirts, yeah. you know, no problem. Because if I buy a subpar shirt, I'm not going to get sick. I'm not going to die. Right. Worst thing that's going to happen is I get embarrassed <laughs> because it starts ripping apart into with holes the first time I wear it or something. But it's right. not a threat to my to my life or my health. Whereas when it comes to eating food, when it comes to doctors and medications um, and stuff like that, now we have a bigger concern and I would have some level. And the question isn't, in my mind, should we have regulation, but just how much? Okay. Um, and, and the same thing, like when you look at things like drugs, it's like, you know, I want the FDA to make sure things are, are safe and effective before I am taking that drug. However, I'm also in favor of legalizing all drugs yeah the fda should make sure the cocaine you're doing is up to standard the <laughs> FDA exactly. should make sure no that i the agree marijuana <laughs> is not you know isn't laced with they should make sure the acid is the kind you know the fun yeah. trippy kind and not the bad trippy kind i mean look at if you want to do you know crystal meth you're an idiot however if you're going to do it let's at least make sure that you know exactly what you're doing and that like this dose has this many milligrams of the active ingredient and it doesn't have poisons and other ingredients. Other different gonna... poisons. Yeah, other different poisons. Pick your exactly. poison. <laughs> I mean, but, but there are at least, you know, a lot of people who die from overdoses when it comes to things like heroin and stuff. It's because, you know, they're used to a certain level of, you know, Did you know this drugs has other drugs in it? <laughs> well, it's other drugs in it, or mm -hmm. it's like, oh, usually I have to like, you know, whatever process <laughs> this quantity to get right. the hit I want. But, oh, I just bought this from someone new, or he bought it from someone new before he sold it to me. And it's five times more potent than I'm used to getting. Mm. And now I'm injecting five times more than I thought, and I kill myself. You sound, you sound like you know what you're doing here, uh, Greg. You're trying to scare me. I got to go to Greg's <laughs> drug dealer who accidentally gives you five times more potent stuff. That's not usually the way it works. It's usually the opposite. Well, see, I this has five that. times the amount of battery acid in it that I'm used to. Exactly. I mean, I'm just saying that, like, you should be allowed, if you're an adult, you should be allowed to do these things. Now, I'll be happy to tell you, if you're my friend, if you're my relative, you're my family member, I'm going to tell you, like, don't do it. You're an idiot. It's going to kill you. It's not good for you. You're going to become an addict. All I mean, the negative yeah. things we would expect. But 
you're an adult, do what you want. Greg, let me uh, right. run this by you that I, I think that in a, in a, again, a utopian society, we can all agree, let people do what they want. Uh, one of the problems with that philosophy is at least from the left, big government, nanny state, uh, and of course, I fight with these people all the time on the left, is that at some point, the, uh, the breakage from those kind of things, the legalization of drugs, uh, uh, creates uh, costs, not just consequences, but costs to society. And those costs have to be borne by the taxpayer, by hospitals, by doctors, by basically them taking, uh, um, you know, bed space that could be used by other people. So in that, in that regard, the government now has a you know, should have a say so uh, over. Is this over more this or less? Situation. Is this more or less than the cost of the DEA and every countless that's drug exactly. trial? I was about uh, to say, like, if when you have the stuff that's illegal now, and you are spending police power and uh, prison, you know, expenses to deal with it, I think we're spending a lot more on the policing and imprisonment of drug users. No, I completely agree are. with the decriminalization, Greg, but let me, let, me, let me put this in your answer. What about opioids, for example? Very highly addictive things. Uh, these are, this is ruining lives. Uh, would you be in favor of legalizing opioids? I would. I would just also want there to be a lot more, you know, education about it all. So people understand what they're getting Just into. Just say no. So we need to, we need to, do you know why uh, people get addicted to opioids? Because they can't do anything else. It's it's what it's a, it's a little bit of fun that they get to have prescribed by their doctors. If I think if other things were were legal and if they were uh, easier to access, you wouldn't have people getting addicted to them. Also, if we had proper health care in this country, they wouldn't get over prescribed either. No, no, good point. But are you saying that if if opioids were like Skittles, that everybody's walking around happy? No, I think no. if there's if there's opioids and cocaine and other uppers and other downers and other recreational things people can do to forget about how fucking shitty their lives are, that they won't get hooked on Vicodin, that they'll do other things, that they'll have other outlets before it comes to this one specific thing. But you're describing other drug outlets, which is really just trading one for and another. I, and I, it doesn't I, have I also to be an think, but That's I also true. think that if it wasn't illegal. And, and therefore, a lot of the stigma goes away. I think the people who are starting to become addicts, you know, and, and it's not like someone is like, oh, I want to be a drug addict, and they start taking stuff. I mean, that was like leaving Las Vegas, the movie, and that's about <laughs> it, you know, and, and there he was choosing the most legal drug of all, alcohol. Maybe easy right? there, easy, easy. But <laughs> all I'm saying is, the money we're spending right now on policing, enforcement, imprisonment, we could spend a fraction of that and make sure people are well-educated and offer them like free, high-quality rehab if they do develop a problem. So, you know, that's why I like to consider myself a practical libertarian. Like, I want the concept of total freedom, as little government as possible and all that, but in some cases, I'm like, let's give them the free rehab. Like a diehard libertarian would never no. be in favor of You're providing not a libertarian, that for free. Right? Liber libertarians must be really, really angry with you because th they, nothing is for free. You would have to swap beads or something. But what I'm saying is rehab. if I can spend, you know, $1 on treatment instead of spending $3 on police and imprisonment, why wouldn't I do this instead? it violates my core concept maybe of the government involvement and in providing this free service to people. Cause Hey, we should all have to pay for what we get. But I'm like, in this case, I'd rather give this guy a dollar than give these guys $3. I, I, and, I think that a lot of people disagree with you, Greg. I think a lot of people, well, I don't, a lot of by people the way, are idiots. a lot of people would rather pay $3 and watch a cop crack someone's skull and see the bar slam shut behind them, then pay one dollar to help that person. Private right, prisons, but private he's, prisons. <laughs> no, but he, he's accurate. I mean, in my opinion, you're accurately calling yourself a practical libertarian. I mean, because that's a very practical approach to pay. That's I mean, the same reason with the roads. I think you know. I, I do agree with the general concept that private corporations are, on average, way more efficient than our absolutely government. Absolutely agree when it comes to doing something. But 
if private companies owned all the roads, unless it was one company with a monopoly, I would be having to like stop and pay a toll over and over and over again, just to go from here to the grocery store. Like New Jersey. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and then as soon yeah. as someone happened to be like, oh, look, at, here's like a bottleneck based on geography and I've got the only road. So it's either take my road for a quarter mile here or drive 20 miles out of your way. So now they're gonna charge you way more than, you know, that cost them to maintain that road, to, to build that road. You know, we would just have all that kind of bullshit going on. If I could bring it back to something you said before, because I, I felt like the distinction you made about, um, you know, when, when something is, is more life-threatening, like you distinguish like buying a shirt from getting yeah. a, a drug, for example. So with an issue such as like mask wearing, right, where hardcore libertarians are like, no, it's about personal freedom. I don't have to wear a mask if I don't want to. Yeah, um, I, I, they're, 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 you know. they're, they're being idiots. Okay, but again, the, the I, line is because it's a health Greg's concern. Not a libertarian. He, Greg's look normal. At if, if, <laughs> I, bet you, I bet you every single one of those libertarians who would say to you that like, I shouldn't have to wear a mask for personal freedom mm -hmm. would, would, none of them would say, and anyone should be allowed to walk around naked in public, going into stores, restaurants, up and down the street, whatever, walking on the sidewalk, they would be against that because I don't want my kids to see that. And I'm like, oh, and I don't want you to breathe death on my kids because you're not wearing your mask. Mm -hmm. So if you, unless you're gonna go to that full extreme and say, you don't even want those kinds of prohibitions either. Um, and, and there'd be a few that would agree with that, that yeah, I should be allowed to walk naked down the sidewalk, you know, right. and they would, they would go that way, but most of them wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I'm just, I mean, I think I, I'd be more than happy to be the person who decides who can walk naked up and down the sidewalk. <laughs> I, I, I am glad to, to know that you wouldn't pick me and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be picked. And, I wouldn't want to be picked either. And you wouldn't pick me. All right, guys. Oh, no, never mind. And, not, and, and you wouldn't pick me unless I was, you weren't around and I was walking in front of Nolan's house because you know it would like piss him off. I actually, I mean, this was way off topic, but I think Whatever we make way too big a deal. We make way too big a deal about nudity in this country. I don't give a fuck if people wear clothes or not. The only thing is it generally is a sign of someone who's deranged in other ways, but I don't give a fuck. You look like you could be on a clothing optional beach right now, actually. It's just that <laughs> I know I can't wait till this is over. I'm stripping down to nada. <laughs> I, I, I'm not just physically, I don't want to be naked. Like, right. Just sitting around the house. I don't care what temperature it is. I'm just like, no, nah, I'm more comfortable with a little bit of clothing on here, like short pants, t-shirt. You know, so I wouldn't, I, I also would not really care if it was legal to walk around naked. Um, huh. I just know that a lot of the people who would choose to do it would be, be people who I would not enjoy. Yeah, viewing. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And just, just like, yeah, the, the nude beaches around are, are not the people you want to see nude. Anyway. By the way, can you imagine? Um, I gotta say, just a second. Um, okay. Can you imagine if that was actually legal? Especially, I live here in Las Vegas. I'm just thinking about walking, uh, well, driving down the strip and seeing all these naked people. I, 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 first of all, I can't even fathom that. And second of all, do you know how many car accidents there would be? Well, not after we all get used to it. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> it would I mean, become a non-issue. I mean, it's like just if a, you, it's just a body. If you had grown up in some society somewhere where people were generally, like the weather was conducive and people were generally naked most of the time when the weather wasn't too cold or whatever, you wouldn't think about it very much. The probably. bigger problem with driving wouldn't be car accidents, be peeling yourself off the seat in Las Vegas, really. That would, that would be the issue. <laughs> That's well, true. <laughs> I, I would not want to get in that taxi and think about, Just, did the, uh, I, like, did that last guy leave skid marks? <laughs> To, I I'm have like, totally, I gotta check this seat for skid marks because that last guy didn't look that clean when he got out of the I've taxi, totally you know? lost control of this show. Yeah. 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 This yeah. Is yeah. Like, well. Uh, okay. Well, I'm gonna bring it back to something sure. then. When when you talked about socialism, Nolan, I want to make sure that, that there's a good understanding there because when I see people screaming at each other, especially like on Facebook or something about this, you know, like the, the more right wing Republican folks 
you know, like I ain't, I don't want socialism. And I'm like, I don't think the word socialism is really being used very well, or at least it's not being we, used. We need to stop using it entirely. We need to pretend. Do you remember how there was a difference when people were like, what do you think of Obamacare? And it was like 80% dis disapproval rating. And then they're like, what do you think of the Affordable Care Act? And it was like 70% approval rating. Yeah, yeah. So yes. We just need to but pretend like we all definitely think socialism is bad, but this other new thing is good. And it's definitely well, not socialism. social services is the, you know, it, it, when we have, I mean, the police is socialism in a sense that here is something the government is taxing us and then providing. And the same thing with the fire department and the same thing with the roads and other infrastructure and all of those things are socialism in a sense. And so when some Republican is going on about this new bill is socialism and it's where does that one step closer to being you know freaking russia and da 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 it's like dude the the diehard definition of social socialism is the government owns all means of productions like there's no private ownership of any business or anything like that every restaurant would be owned by the government of whatever sort it was and you know every facility that produced products that provided any services they would all be owned by the government and that, that's not know. that's not correct but 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 go ahead when you go to the dictionary the, and you look up the definition of socialism it says the government owns all means no it doesn't i mean it says the people the people control the means of production there's a significant difference now we can you know we can get into you know, what, what is the, I've, is seen the I've seen the word government in a dictionary and a lot of people, they'll just throw that in your face. If you're arguing in favor of like, the, the, know, the idea, the sentiment is the all. same, basically the mischaracterization of what it is and yeah. the, and the, which is to take socialism at its strictest definition, which is why I think we just need to stop using that word uh, because we'll have enough people who want to fight it even without it's a it's a dog whistle definition. word for a lot I, of I get what you're going at and, I, and I would say here here's the thing I, I don't back off the word socialist because i like to see it corrected and demystified i know i because it has I, been I think that's so noble just, wait a second and i i agree that i this is a mark we're, we're very bad at marketing i'll be the first to say we we do not you know market ourselves well in the sense of um, I think that's why I think the Bernie Sanders campaign in 2016 what do you mean? to a lesser I mean, I'm at home and I have my brand on my hugger. I mean, I market myself great, you know, to a lesser extent that's the Sanders demystified that word for a lot of people. Hey, that doesn't sound so bad when they heard Bernie Sanders ideas. I'm not trying to refit, re refight the yeah. 2016 campaign. I'm, I'm just saying, but, like, but, but, we made, wait a minute, but we made some considerable progress in just the last five or six years on this word and on this concept. By the way, ask people under 20, 30, under 35, what their view is on socialism versus capitalism. You know what the, uh, uh, you know what the, the, the percentages are pretty, pretty favorable for, for socialism. I like our chances in the future. Uh, libertarianism, I'm not so sure that's- uh, I'm, I'm just trying to point it out so that people understand what we're debating. Because in many, many cases, you could have someone who's saying, I'm against socialism and you're for it. And if you guys got rid of that word and just talked about each individual thing, you might find that you agree on almost all of it, like what the government should and shouldn't do or be involved in. But you're saying you're in favor of socialism and they're saying they hate it and don't want it. But that's because you and they are using that word with completely different meanings. I think that the people who misconstrue what socialism is do it intentionally. And I think that they use that sort of Venezuela response when they really want to say, I don't want to help other people is what they're saying. They know what socialism is they know what we're going for we're not going for communism socialism we're not going for everything being gray and black and white like it was in communist russia all we're saying is we think that people have the right to live and eat and have health care and that we should all share in the cost and when they say that's socialism look at venezuela what they're really saying is fuck everybody else I don't want to be a part of that. And I think that 
people should be more honest about that rather than intentionally misconstruing or misunderstanding what socialism is because everyone appreciates socialism when it's helping them. Nobody turns away the fire department. Nobody tore up their stimulus checks. And the, and the biggest anti-Democrat, anti-socialist people I know, there's like 85% approval for another stimulus. That is fucking socialism. So don't say you oh, don't yeah. want it. No, you're right. They want it when it helps them. Correct. But let, me, let me bring it in. Let me bring it into where we uh, have some agreement because I found that uh, before we were on the air, uh, Joe Stapes said something interesting. And he's absolutely right that we, we all are different. You know, we have different philosophies, but on social media and a lot of, uh, a lot of things, we, we had some remarkable agreement. Now, the last, say, uh, uh, campaign cycle, we were, uh, I think all of us were against Trump. So that was, that was certainly a common thread. But taking that away for a moment, the concept of this show is that where do we have common, uh, common ideas? And I think that we're, what we can agree on is that when, when I talk about socialism or any political philosophy, there are three essential planks, economic, social issues, and foreign policy. You could be a libertarian on, let's say, social issues yeah. and a socialist on economics and in foreign policy, something else, an isolationist versus a globalist. I mean, there are different things. So all, all, this, this strata sure. of three different, say, the triage of, 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 uh, of, of philosophy, uh, there are contradictions and even hypocrisies in a lot of people's, including my own, including all of us, uh, in, in what we believe. So when someone says they're a socialist, well, I'm an economic socialist, but when it comes to social or cultural issues, do I want the government essentially telling me what to do, like, you know, drinking, gambling, drugs, things like that? Well, I think that uh, I'm in a Greg Raymer's camp on that. So maybe I'm a libertarian on the social uh, issue front. So I think that's where we have the term social libertarianism. What does that mean? And why is it not a contradiction? It's because I guarantee you, a lot of people watching this show, they may not realize they're social, uh, so, libertarian socialists, but when they hear what they're for and what we're for, they're probably going to come down, uh, hopefully, in our camp. So even if they are, I mean, what, what both Greg and Joe said is like, you're basically taking two of the most unpopular tags and combining them. <laughs> right? it's like, why why can't true. we find something, a new way? If it is as popular as you say, why are we resistant to rebranding it? Why don't we? We should be the puppy dogs. We're the, we're the puppy dogs. Everyone loves puppy dogs or something. Look, it's, yeah. it's the golden rule, right? It's, it's the philosophy of just treat others as you would like to be treated. Would I like to have my health care paid for when I come down with a debilitating disease? Yes. Therefore, I don't have a problem paying into other people. Would I want to be told what kind of porn I can jerk off to uh, <laughs> in my own home? No, therefore, I don't care what kind of porn other people jerk off to in their homes, you know, other than. Thanks, we can thanks. appreciate it. Thanks, so. not, thanks, thanks. Not be, you know, <laughs> as long as people are, of, of, of cons are consenting adults, I do not care what goes on. Um, and that's it. Like that, that is really what comes down to the oldest rule that exists in all of, even before the Bible, treat others the way you want to be treated. That's it. That's social libertarian. Do, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yes. That's exactly what it is. We're quoting the Bible now. That's how, hey, that's how we evolved on completely. this show. You lost control, Matt. <laughs> I agree with you completely, Joe. But the funny thing is, like, the people with really strong religious views, they think that like forcing you to believe like them is what I, well, if I strayed, I would want you to force me back on. That's a this. good point. That's a good so point. So that's, that's the, the, maybe the downside with the golden rule wording is they that do they, think would, they are saving you. Yeah. They, they don't think they're doing anything evil to, uh, you know, send you off to uh, re-education to, to, you know, preach the gay out of you or things of that sort. They, they, and they think if I somehow turn gay, I would want you to do this for me. Now, once they turn gay, they would change their mind, of course. Right. Um, but 
so that I mean it's 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 a great rule, of course, but it has its downside because someone will be like, oh, no, no, I would want you to do this. I would want you to leave me in the street dying of a curable disease if I didn't have the money to pay for it. It's the only way to live is to <laughs> die. <laughs> yeah. I, I think maybe you're giving people a little too much credit. I, I mean, in my opinion, because there are certainly people that know what socialism is or what we're purporting and like they're feigning ignorance to say, no, I don't want any of that. I think there's some people that are genuinely being misled and have a false idea of what, you know, socialism or even on a lesser level, Democrats in general, like Democrats are all evil. And if they like it, it must be bad. You know, it's people are subscribing to that nowadays. Real quick, real quick Matt, can I say this? Taking the time to, yeah, Matt, yeah, let me say course. this. The Democrats are basically, you know, that old, there's a thing called ultra light beer where it's like 1% alcohol. That's what the Democrats are on socialists. They're, they're kind of like socialists, light, 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 light. And it's still too much for some people, right? Yeah. That's the idea. Like too much more, for me. Right. I mean, I mean, you're, you're seeing it as socialism light. is too much. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we supported Bernie Sanders, so we obviously would be comfortable with the high alcohol beer, you know. Yes, but, yeah. um, well, I'm no, not talking about socialism. Yeah. I'm just talking about beer. Oh, okay. Fair nobody enough. knows what the fuck is going on, but they feel the need to have an opinion on it anyway. Like, right. the But the talking points, you're right, Matt, that people fire out there uh, against Democrats and against socialism – are, are really just like automated responses. Uh, Venezuela, China Joe. And you're like, you really give Democrats way too much credit. Even if their goal was to turn the United States into China, they would fuck it up royally. <laughs> so you're like, yeah. you're, these fears you have are so stupid because A, that's not what anyone is after, except for maybe Nolan. And to B, even if they did, nothing gets done anyway. Do you really think Democrats are that good at getting things done that they're going to just, we're going to be, we're going to be communist China in under four years? Well, that's why all government conspiracies in general are so silly. When, when people talk about, you know, oh, government cover up, we didn't really go to the moon. And I'm like, do you really think our government's capable of orchestrating something that complicated? The only, no, the and, only and thing pulling they, it off, like no way in hell. The like, only thing they can cover up is their fuck ups. They can't cover like that's the only thing they can't create something and then cover it up. Let me ask you a question related to an issue that that's um, kind of in the news nowadays. I mean, what I, I'm just starting to learn about libertarianism in general, and I guess it would largely be considered anti capitalist right on a on no. a basic in a basic sense no no, no it is, no, no, no. It is the no. most no. pro capitalist it's 100 percent uh, the, the, oh, i'm sorry wait, wait, I, I miss i misspoke i apologize it's capitalism on steroids i misspoke Brr, rewind okay. okay libertarian socialism which you sent me the link to nolan is purporting to be anti-capitalist no so as opposed okay. to libertarianism no, by what itself. i love about what i love about this okay. what we're talking about today man sorry. Uh, okay. is, is that it is, we're finally starting to realize not everything has to be one thing. True. Right? And so what, as far as I understand this libertarian socialism is you can be a millionaire, you can be a multimillionaire, you can even be a billionaire, but maybe you're not a hundred billionaire. Maybe we just start to say it's still capitalism, just not wild, unadulterated, unabetted capitalism all the time there are just going to be certain limits to capitalism that sometimes the public good is going to outweigh capitalism in this particular thing when it comes to health care when it comes to education uh when it comes to to uh people the rich paying their fair share that's how i interpret it that you can still be rich you can still be super rich just maybe once you have enough wealth that you and your children couldn't spend it in a hundred lifetimes, maybe we start to take a bigger piece of that. Yeah, Joe, Joe just nailed it here. And the, the entire concept here is as follows. One size fits all. I can't believe I'm saying this. One <laughs> size fits all doesn't work. Uh, th there may be an approach that's libertarian oriented that is a, a, the best way to solve an issue. 
a, a very, very far leftist idea may be the best way to solve an issue. So again, we, we tend to be in our silos, we go to our, our, our friends, and we, we unfortunately, I think we, we hear our own voices to such a great extent that we don't listen to maybe solutions that are across the fence on the other side. And I think that's the whole idea with this bridging of two very disparate ideas, libertarianism and socialism, and recognizing that maybe that's the solution. Individual freedom where it can be applied and where people can prosper and have businesses and, and do what they want with their lives. And at the same time, all, at least most of the fundamental things that give us life and happiness and the essence of existence, again, healthcare, clean water, clean air, safety, security, uh, a, a sense of just uh, being comfortable in your country, with you, in your community. I think there's a mental health here that's, we're just talking about economics. How about just the idea of like, I'm not terrified that if I get sick, that I'm going to be bankrupt. I mean, live, most of the people in this country have to live with that fear, unless you have a lot of money. So I think that's, that's what we're talking about, the liberation, the true freedom of socialism or of uh, essentially sharing these ideas and coming together, work together, is really the ultimate in freedom. How about an issue like I, I, what I was going to bring up was like the issue of minimum wage, for example, because I'm still not entirely sure how I come down on that, because <laughs> from, a, um, from a societal standpoint, it sounds like a, it, it's a good idea. Um, from a, you know, capitalist slash personal freedom standpoint, it's like, well, if people are willing to work for less and, you know, why should business owners be forced to, you know, carry the burden? So... Where, where does that fit into this discussion, would you say, an uh, uh, issue like that? Um, no I mean, one, look, uh, right? I, look I, I, when people say, hey, if you make the minimum wage $15 an hour, then the price of everything is going to go up. I agree with that. Uh, like, I, I think that people are right in assuming that's going to happen. But that's because the people at the top are never going to settle for any less, making less money than they made the year before. It's like, I think it's a law, Greg, you probably know this. Like when you're a publicly traded company, you have to do everything you possibly can to maximize your profits, right? Like you can't even willingly give a raise to all your employees. Like your, your shareholders would have. Well, like, it's a, not a law, but, but you theoretically as a member of the board have a duty. Your primary duty is to the shareholders. Yeah. So but that doesn't mean you have to make them the most money you possibly can today. You can be forward thinking you know, like there's news it's a tough lately sell to, about to willingly, Costco raising right, their a, minimum wage. And they're saying, we are not doing this just to be like good or to get publicity or any of that. We're doing it because we think it creates better employees who work better, who work harder, who are happy to be here and therefore are doing their job more effectively. And that makes us offer a better service to our customers so in other words, we're saying we raise their wages and we think that we as a company do better as a result right. of that. Now, whether that was all just a big PR spin, I don't know. But if you take them at their word, that means we are reducing maybe profits immediately in the very short term because we think it's going to grow the business and we'll do better later. Whether, so, whether or not you believe that is true uh, you know there's one thing right there's believing that is true but there are people yes. th that may or may not be correct right that may or may not be that could sure. be right it could be wrong but there are plenty of people who don't believe it to be true and therefore will never do that no there's plenty of people that would not voluntarily just pay all their bottom end employees more because right. we and think that would be beneficial because they would like you said they would think that no, it's more beneficial to my bottom line. Like forget shareholders. Like uh, pretend we got the one person, I own this company all by myself. No one else owns any of it. If my only goal is to maximize the money coming into my pocket, I certainly might decide to try to get away with paying all my employees as little as possible. Correct. Because I might think that's going to make me more money. Correct. Or I might pay them better, treat them better, give them more benefits because I think that will make me more money by having happier employees who don't quit and look for better jobs, who stick around a long time. So there might be all these great reasons to do it, but yes, everyone will not feel that way, whether it's correct or not. 
how do we feel about it being mandated? Like the government steps in and says, you no longer have a choice. Like Costco, Walmart, whoever. I'm definitely in favor of a minimum wage because we, you know, I mean, it's 725 now. If there wasn't a minimum wage law at 725, we'd find some of these businesses offering people only four or five bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know like what the answer is so that you don't have a completely overreaching government. But like, so the way I look at things is sort of like in this pie in the sky sort of scenario, which is the government says, here's what the minimum wage is. And also you're not going to raise prices either. You're just going to make less money. Like everyone, not everyone, but plenty of businesses in this country make plenty of money. And the reason I like socialism is there's, there's, I don't know where it is or how you enforce it without it being awful, but th the word enough, right? What is enough? How much is enough? How many billions of dollars do you have to make this quarter before it's enough? Before you're like, you know what? We do pretty good. Like we'll be fine. Like McDonald's raising the minimum wage. They're going to be fine. They're not sure. going to go out of business. They but I, I wouldn't want to mandate prices though. I wouldn't right. want to have the government say, you know, Joe, you're going to start paying your people $15 instead of seven and a quarter. And I'm not going to allow you to raise your prices on your burgers for the next two years. And after that, you're going to have to get approval for any raises. Because now we got the government telling you essentially now how much you can charge for everything. Right. I, and, I under and maybe McDonald's can do all that and still make money, but maybe the mom and pop burger shop can't because they aren't buying a million pounds of beef at a time from mega farms and they're buying it, you know, totally, which is where, batches, where, higher price, where higher I would cost want, of goods. Where I would want more government is not on the fixing the price end, is on the profit end where you're taxed at a higher percentage rate, the more money you make, uh, you know, that marginal yeah. tax rate, when people talk about make America great again, those were the years when the rich were paying the most taxes ever. Yeah, and that is one of the issues. I mean, the, our tax system in general is a huge complicated mess. There is no one, no single person on this planet who fully understands the US, US tax code. And if you were to try to accomplish that goal, by the time you fully understood everything as it exists now, so much time would have gone by and it would have changed so much that you'll never catch up. And it's like the painting fact the that Golden it's Gate that, Bridge. Yeah, it's like it's no. the fact that no. you're never no. going to understand it at it at it. And that's why people talk about all these little tax tricks and dodges and this and that. Like when people complain that Trump didn't pay enough income tax, I'm like, look at if he followed the law, if he did not do anything illegal in how he you know, he, he presented the truthful information as required, and the result was this, then I'm not going to give him shit for not paying more tax, no matter how much money he banked that year. I'm going to give shit to us, our, our Congress, our IRS, for not having better tax laws that prevented him from avoiding paying taxes in a year when he made a lot of money. Yeah. Well, that's the entire idea here is that it's the system that's broken. So what is a system that can be imp implemented that would essentially not, you know, where a secretary is paying more money in taxes <clears throat> than Donald Trump over the nine out of the last 10 years. And then he's on national television telling people he's worth $10 billion with a B. I mean, there's just, there's something wrong with this picture, folks. It's, it's really comes down you can point to a lot of different things, Citizens United and stuff like that. You know, the fact that anyone with enough money can go lobby, you know, politicians and try to get laws changed to favor their personal situation, um, whether it's an individual or a corporation. But it really, I think, in the end comes down to education and a desire amongst all of us citizens to be more knowledgeable and more involved. I probably know 10 times as much as the average person about how the government works and what's going on and all of the, you know, who's who in government and stuff like that. And I don't even know 10% of what I think I should know to be a full good citizen. Like I, you know, I'm thinking like, I don't know who my state representative is 
for you know like at the in the North Carolina state you know government I mean who what who, who represents my district Some, it's probably state? somebody I mean, it's probably somebody despicable if it's in North Carolina Greg <laughs> I'm saying, I don't even know who that person is um and and that's ridiculous that I don't know that and yet I know way more than most people about all this stuff and so the fact that I'm this pathetic and yet way above average you know that's the sad news um, that we don't all know a lot more and that we're not all involved and that if you know if Nolan was the representative and he voted for or against something that I think is truly a horrible vote that I'm not holding that against him at the next election but it's like people don't have a clue and so I'm just like oh you are the R or the D and I'm in that clan so I'm going to vote for or against you because of which clan you're in and that's about as far as it goes for most people i mean look as long as you talk about education is you know i i talk about again i don't know how you fix this and uh you know i i'm I, in my mind i i imagine a benevolent right a benevolent pure government that has very strong powers but it's never abused which i know is unrealistic right but yeah. i think of things like like the, the tax now we're going to take more money from the rich because we the government are full of good and honest decent people and this money is going to be spent in a good way to help people well i also think that as far as it comes to education i got some strong feelings about free speech right now like the people who spread lies on facebook and misinformation and dumb down america intentionally or otherwise i i think there should be consequences for that i think there should be consequences for saying things like Bill Gates is trying to microchip you uh, by by taking this taking this vaccine, it is harmful. It is that is harmful. People, the only carve out you ever see is don't yell fire in a crowded theater. People are doing that every single day to the world. I'm sorry. What are you what are you media. saying, Joe? Are you suggesting that the uh, well, like libel and slander laws should be? Um, I don't know if the word loosened or what the word is, but liberalized in the sense that I, there should be. Yeah, dude, I don't know what the, again, I don't know what the answer is, but I know it's a fucking problem, man, that misinformation. Well, it's like, in, in, I have a wonderful, great aunt, you know, an older lady in her 80s, you know, I've known her my whole life. She's a wonderful person, loves everyone, would want the best for everyone in the world. She's not racist, any of these other things. But she follows, you know, news sources that are things like evangelical ministers and you know Fox News and stuff like this. So she says things like, you know, Joe Biden is bought and paid for by China because she's hearing it from them and she's putting it on her Facebook posts because she believes it. She doesn't think she's lying. She doesn't think she's spreading a, a false narrative. She thinks she's helping her friends learn the truth. Right. And so it's like, I wouldn't want a law that was going to penalize her just for being ignorant. That, that's the hardest part, right? Is finding out where it originated. I mean, that, yeah. that's who you have to go and, after. And, and, Russia, uh, Russia. And, where, and what, do you do, what do you do? Like, what do you do with these people that have been indoctrinated that much? Do you re-educate them? That's a fucking scary yeah, word, right? let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to send let's, your let's, aunt I'm going to be the guy to round to them be, up. To be deprogrammed. <laughs> Right, that sounds really, really horrible. But what? How yep. do you fix it? I don't. I don't know. Well, that, how that's the thing. Fixed. If you if you say well, we're going to re-educate you, you know, away from your like right wing conservative, you know, misinformation, it sounds pretty ridiculous. If we were to say though, like, oh wait, Joe got pulled into a cult, you know, and we pulled him out and re-educated him, and oh thank God we did because the rest of that cult just killed themselves the other day after we pulled him out. It'd be like, oh, well, we're all thrilled to death now that we pulled Joe out in time and re-educated him so he didn't run back. So, yes. It's all it's about a, the messaging, a, right? That's Yeah, what we, yeah. I mean, yeah, re-education. Yeah. And I mean, I've had conversations yeah. with people talking about libertarianism and freedom. And, and they were like, yeah, the government should stay out of my business and I should get to do this and that. And then I'll mention something like heroin. And they're like, oh, that shit's bad for you, man. The government has to stop that. It's crazy. And I'm absolutely- like, well, wait, wait, wait. You just said the government should stay out of everyone's business. And now I, you're saying, but unless it's something you think is bad, then I, they I, should stop it. 
I find that with the, the right wing mentality that they want the government to stay out of everything except for violence. They they like the violent things the government does. We like borders and we like bombs guns. and we like police and we like guns and we want no other rules anywhere else. Which and, is and police strange. and policing uh, uh, their their version of morality, which right. has been a whereas, real problem on the right for a long time. We're the complete flip side of that, where we want the government to enforce um, lots of other things, especially when it comes to business and how social safety nets are concerned. But we don't want a lot of to do made about borders and armies and bombs and police. It's very strange where that sort of where how the two different groups, what makes them feel safe and secure? I feel like there was a time, and I can't pinpoint exactly when it was, but it was like, if it was pointed out to somebody that they were being blatantly um, uh, contradictory, I'm, I can't think of the right word, but... Um, Contrarian. Yeah, like, that That would, like, um, open their eyes a little bit, and now it's sort of, like, uh, um, just accepted, like, you're, uh, you know, yeah. you're, you're saying something that goes completely against your views. It's like, oh, I don't give a shit anymore. You know, it's what I want. One of my favorite libertarian stories, and this has happened to many, many times, is, you know, I've talked, you know, like, oh, like, da -da -da, we're talking about who you're going to vote for. So, like, let's say back in 2016, who are you going to vote for? And, and, and I would tell someone, oh, I'm going to vote for the libertarian. And they're like, you know, tell me, you're an idiot. You're just throwing your vote away. Like, that guy can't win. And I'd say, well, where do you live? Like, oh, I live in California. I'm like, oh, so you're going to vote for Hillary. Like, well, hell no. I would never vote for the her, but, you know. And I'm like, but you just said I shouldn't vote for the Libertarian because he can't win. You're in California. Trump can't win. Only Hillary is going to win in California. We know that this time, this election, she, between the two of them, she, she's winning California. And it's, it's given. It's guaranteed. And they just could not understand how that was completely different. Because, well, he, he could still win the overall election. The fact that he can't win my state doesn't mean anything. And I'm like, you're the guy who should be voting for whoever you like best. If you, if you like hate Hillary so much, and that's the only reason you're voting for Trump, but you really like the libertarian candidate the best, or the green candidate, or whatever, the, you know, the Jetsons candidate the best, vote for that person. Well, that's because we're voting against people most of the time. And so what they're saying That's, to you, that was what, me this time, anything yeah. but Trump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think, you know, people uh, use the wrong wording when they say you're throwing your vote away, which obviously is incorrect. I do think people should be able to vote for whoever they want. However, this year when I encountered people saying, uh, you know, I, I can't I, I hate Trump, but I, we need a change in this country. So I'm going to vote third party. I wouldn't say you're throwing your vote away. I would just say, please don't do that. Please. Well, I would ask them if they were in a swing state. Yeah, please, please don't just please don't do that. I understand why we we don't want Donald Trump in no matter what. As a personal favor to me, I am asking you, please don't yes. do that. However, I get it. I, like it's not throwing your vote away and there does need to be some real change. I actually I, I'm like trying to get a little involved in pushing the, the ranked tier voting. Uh, in this country, I think it's like fucking ice skating uphill, probably because the people in power will never want to give up power. But I think that would solve a lot of problems, too. Yeah, I mean, I voted for Biden because I was voting against Trump. Right. Four years ago, I voted for a libertarian candidate. And the year before and the you know, the four years before that and four years before that, because at those times, this wasn't a swing state. But, you know, if I had been in California all this time, and I knew the Democratic candidate was going to win the state, I would always be voting for my favorite candidate, regardless of party. Move to California. You're welcome here. Um, anyway. Everyone is. That's what's <laughs> great about it. Of course. Well, you're all welcome here. Nolan, uh, it's been a great conversation. I, I know we're on a bit of a time constraint here. So um, maybe we could just go around the horn one last time. Maybe, um, you know, 30 seconds to a minute each, if you have any final thoughts about anything we've talked about. Um, I'll go around my horn. Uh, Joe, you'd be first. Anything? Okay, I think we should get back together in six months' time and really do like a big word cloud over words we can use to replace 
democratic socialism and libertarian socialism. It's got to pop. We need a real madman <laughs> Madison Avenue. We need something that pops, something that registers with the kids, something that's going to uh, not scare away all the idiots out there who don't know the actual definitions of these words and something that's just going to appeal to everybody. And we'll have like a big word salad and we'll, we'll, we'll decide what the thing's going to be. I should have done it before the show today. I honestly, I, I was lazy and I was going to be like, here's five new things we could call this. And I should have done it. So next time let's have that ready to go. Absolutely. <laughs> All about the messaging, baby. Yes. Yes. My, my first yeah. thought, Joe, is the, the parachute party. Like you get to do this crazy freedom thing but you got to parachute to make sure you don't kill yourself it's better than what we have currently so far that's the front like runner a, you know or, or the bungee jumping it's like bungee jumpism like you know you get to do it but hey it's really actually pretty safe you know if you do it right um the bungee jump main, party that, that, that doesn't sound good <laughs> every once know. in a while you smack your head on the bottom of the ravine but it's very rare when it's done right it's very right. very safe 99 percent effective the main thing I take away from this is, you know, no one's comment, you know, about how it's three different things. You got the foreign policy, you got the, you know, social issues, meaning like drugs, sex, you know, the, the way, things we do as we live our life. And then you've got the economic issues. And so when I think of myself, maybe as a libertarian socialist, I'm thinking more of, I'm a libertarian on the social issues but I'm much more of a progressive on the economic issues, maybe. And the foreign policy stuff, yeah, there I'm just kind of meh. Like, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, I'd like to bring that back, by the way, as being unsure about things. Totally sure. fine to not know. I don't fucking know. Sure. I don't know. It's okay to say I don't know. We don't have to be experts all the time. And, and all these, like, the nuances are perfectly okay on an individual level, but once you're a politician, it's like, forget it. You're not allowed to have any nuance oh, Everything is always yeah. just one thing. Yeah. <laughs> Nolan? Well, so the, the, the big word of the day that's, uh, that we, I think, agree on or that's the big word in politics is freedom. And freedom means kind of the same thing, but we all have a different idea of how to achieve it. Uh, my idea is that no one can be free, no man or woman or child can be free in America when they are burdened with massive debt, whether it's to banks, whether it's to uh, because of uh, credit card bills, whether it's the mortgages, when we're constantly fighting, basically 75% of the country is fighting an uphill battle just for survival and sustenance in a society that gets more and more expensive and difficult with each and every year, we are going to have to start and learn to cooperate together. And cooperation is really the essence of socialism. Social is the key word there. Social meaning working together. That's the root. It's not communism. It's based on social engagement and cooperation. That I, is I how we're going to achieve freedom. Uh, no with, one... That's it's for libertarianism. Nolan, we're going to learn to work together to fix these problems, or we're going to learn to work together to build guillotines. I promise you mm. that this, we cannot continue the way yeah. things are going. Well, it, the guillotine market, is there any patents available on that? Because that sounds, <laughs> that sounds yeah, like... Yeah, we can either come up with a new word for this or, or build a better guillotine. Technology. Yeah. It's old technology, so you might invent a new twist on it, but... <laughs> Something if you think you invented something, you can yeah. reach out to me and I'll you know, be oh, able to help right. you. I'm not a lawyer oh, anymore. Oh, I'm not a lawyer anymore, but I'm still a patent agent with the patent office. So I can still like cool. draft. I can still file a patent application on your behalf and so represent have, you before the patent office and that stuff. And how about it? Yeah, can I ask? Can I ask Greg a real quick question before we go? I know that we're running over time, but if anybody is with us here and is still is going to want to know this. Greg, since you have so much experience in the pharmaceutical, um, uh, you know, your background being a patent attorney for Pfizer, uh, give, give us your, you know, say one minute breakdown of the status of the COVID thing and all. What do you think is going to happen, particularly with regard to the field that you used to work in? Well, I mean, do you mean just the medical? I mean, that sounds like a medical well, what question. I mean, what I mean is, is the, gover expertise. the government, well, the government's paying for these, all these things now, but we're going to have more viruses down the road. I mean, unfortunately, I don't think that once this is licked, we're, we're not off the hook yet. So what, no, there, you know, there'll always be some new disease. In the so so we're at some I mean, point. Is, this is not sustainable where we burn through $2 trillion a year just in fighting a pandemic. This is not sustainable. 
Uh, and again, what yeah. happens on the next one? And that's going to come into the, the field that you used to be in. Uh, I, I know that this is an impossible thing to answer in a minute. It's, but I, it's I, not I, really a patent question, though. It's yeah. just that, that, you know, patent law doesn't really answer your question. So in that regard, you know, that's my expertise. Um, well, can, can you at least tell us about how the, the, the patent is likely to shake out? The well, there, I don't know. I don't know. From, I a patent, pr from a patent perspective, are we going to make it as a race? Go. <laughs> um, I think we've prioritized ourselves, so we're invalid and uh, it's that. And, and only a patent attorney would understand that joke. <laughs> so. oh, ask, guys, ask him how yeah. to play ace queen off suit in late position, Joe. <laughs> you guys, I can't answer that question either. It's like. Uh, <laughs> There's too much unstated information there for me to give you a good answer. Oh, I thought it was a trade secret. I thought that's why you weren't going to no. tell us. No. Oh, okay. Um, guys, thank you for your insight, uh, unique point of views. This has been a great conversation. Thank you so much. Joe, I know you're saying it tongue in cheek. But come back in six months. Let's figure this out together. We, we need to rebrand socialism, uh, libertarianism. Uh, I don't feel as strongly about it. Socialism needs to be rebranded like, immediately. So, But a lot of those it. on the left mm -hmm. hate that word libertarianism. Uh, well, okay, let's rebrand. So, re I mean, if you, if you want to bring in the people on the far left, you need to get rid of the libertarian yeah, phrase. I think it if needs you want to bring in the people on the far right, you need to get rid of the socialism phrase. When we get so a two-for-one deal with a PR agency. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you, like I said, we almost, you need a new word that's one thing we do as patent lawyers is we define exactly what a word means for this yeah. application itself. So, I mean, if Joe had invented the new guillotine and I'm helping him with his patent, there might be some component here that is roughly a screw, but it could maybe be something else that's part of this machine. And so I say, when I use the word screw throughout this document, it means exactly this. And my definition could include most of what you would normally call a screw, but not mm -hmm. every thing that would normally be considered a screw. He did it. it. Might he just brought it back to patents, guys. And it, <laughs> might, it, it, and it might encompass some things that you wouldn't normally consider a screw. So I have defined that word to have a very specific meaning for my one document. Okay. And we need to create a term that we can define in this way that encompasses this libertarian socialism concept but doesn't carry the baggage of those two individual words. And could you copyright or trademark whatever we come up with? Like if, it's the no. if it's the parachute party, like, boom, we got a lock trademark, on that. Trademark, possibly. Uh, hey, yeah. dude, it's socialism. We don't, get, we don't get to profit off of it. <laughs> oh, no, it's just make sure it's the official term. No, we're not going to profit. It's a, no. Not for profit. I mean, I'm, anyway. not an, I'm not the expert on copyright and trademark, but you can't copyright a phrase. <laughs> All right. I just learned something new. Okay. Trademark, you know. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll get the TM, uh, whatever we decide to uh, come I mean, up I, with. I used to live near Foxwoods, and they have the wonder of it all. Now, they can have a trademark on that phrase, but they can't copyright it. Got it. In that sense. I could swear I've heard the wonder of it all, like a Disney thing or something. I don't know. Oh, that's the thing. Uh, you could use it for all kinds of stuff, but yeah. their trademark probably only encompasses casinos, gambling, resorts, hotels. So if you use it for something else. All right. Well, we're going to come up with it. That's, that's our goal, guys. We're going to rebrand whatever. We're just going to save the world, basically. Sense. Yeah. Well, it's got to start somewhere. <laughs> guys, thank you again. It's been a great conversation. I hope we can do it again. Uh, for Joe Stapleton, Greg Raymer, Nolan Dalla, I'm Matt Lessinger. This has been an intelligent conversation. Hope to see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Take care now.